from about four o'clock this morning, the Lord woke me up and began to minister to me. And he dropped something in my spirit. And we'll just see what the Lord says. Luke chapter 10. Let's look at starting at verse number 30. We'll read until God tell me to shut up. Hallelujah. The Bible says, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed on the other side. And likewise, a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said unto him, Take care of him, and whatsoever he spendeth more, when I come again, I will repay thee. I want to go back to verse 30. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for your grace and your mercy. I thank you for your power and your presence. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you speak through me to your people. For God, you know where we are. You know how we are. I'm asking that you would infiltrate our spirits, Lord God. Speak a word unto us, Lord Jesus. Minister to us, Lord Jesus. Come in this place and stretch out. Walk down every aisle and sit on the pew. Throw your weight around in this building, God. Have your way. God, I commit my works unto you. You said if I do that, my thoughts shall be established in the name of Jesus. Have your way. Speak, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Put your Bibles down. Put your hands together. Open up your mouth and give God some glory in this house. Hallelujah. You may be seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. I want to speak on the subject for a little while. The recovery project. The recovery project. Oftentimes you would hear me say this saying, and anybody who's been around me know a saying that I say all the time that the decisions you make today affect the rest of your life. The thing about decisions are that you choose something. A decision has to be made to do simply 
anything that you have to do, if you're going to make a choice to go to the store or stay at home or you make a decision whether or not you were going to buy groceries, you make a decision on what clothes you were going to put on. But the decisions you make sometimes are very easy and then there's some decisions that are very, very hard. Deciding whether or not someone's going to live or die, whether or not to pull the plug or not. Decisions that you choose sometimes affect you in different ways. The problem with certain decisions, especially with church people, is sometimes we find ourselves in the place where God's wanting us to go. We push ourselves. He sets us in a place, in an environment where we can do and grow and excel in him. And as we begin to excel in him, sometimes we get bored with the process because we don't think that we're far enough along where we think we should be. We know we're on the right road. We know we're on the right track because we came to church and we came to church and we feel the Holy Ghost do that. And we, we know that we're on the right track, but we hadn't quite yet just arrived. But we know we're on the right path. We're in the right place at the right time. And we're on the right track for God to do what he wants to do. But sometimes in the middle of all of this, we get a little distracted. Our minds begin to not get focused on where we are. We, we begin to start getting, getting uh, frustrated about the process of where we are. Not knowing that, that God has a plan for us right now. We're not feeling everything just yet, but we know we're in the right environment for things to take off for us. We know we're in the right spot. We know we're in the right place. And the decision should be to stay in the place where God puts you. However, we begin to wonder in our minds. And when our minds begin to wonder, our bodies will soon follow. It amazes me these decisions that we make because even though we're in the right place, our bodies are in the right place, we're in the right place at the right time, our, our minds begin to travel and try to see if there's O, P, G. Are you down with O, P, G? What's O, P, G? Well, I'm glad you asked me. I'm talking about other people's grass. Other people's grass looks so much better than where I am. I can be in the church and in the right place at the right time, but my mind began to wonder on what it would be like if I was somewhere else. My mind begins to wonder what it would be like if I was ever able to partake of what's on the other side of the fence. We, we know this scenario because cows do it all the time. Cows can have acres upon acres of land to graze upon and, and, and the, the master of the land makes sure that the grass is fertile for all the cows to partake of. But every single one of those cows every now and then will look down the fence row and try to figure out there's got to be something better than where I am. Grass is just thick as it wants to be where they are, but the cow will make his way slowly but surely to the edge of the fence. And depending on the kind of fence it is, they will wiggle their head to get through the fence so their head is in other people's grass. But their body is still where it was supposed to be. The problem I have with this is in the church because your body sometimes is in the house of God, but your head is somewhere else. The problem with your head being somewhere else is that depending on the type of fence it is, they can't get their head back inside the fence because they get caught up with the entrapment of the barrier messed up because now your head is all messed up because you're in OPG your head is so messed up now that you can't get back to where your body wants to be but your mind won't do right you want to come back home but you can't because something is keeping you out and takes an act of mercy of somebody coming in and extending the fence to let the cows in, but the cow comes back injured, wounded, 
and scarred. This is no different than this story we, we take a part of in this particular portion of scripture because the Bible says a certain man went down from Jerusalem have to understand that anytime you see Jerusalem, Jerusalem is uphill. It's at the height of glory. It is the place where God dwells. And anytime you leave Jerusalem, you go down. The man went down from Jerusalem. He went down in his spirit. He went down in his mind. He went down in his emotion. He went down and fell. Because the Bible says that he went down from Jerusalem and fell among thieves. And he must, the thieves thing just messed up my mind because the Bible tells me the thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. Now that messes with my mind now because we understand that the enemy can't stand us. And he wants to do everything that he can to keep us distracted with our head in other people's grass. He wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your happiness. He wants to kill your emotions. He wants to kill your very life. He wants to destroy everything that you want to do in life. Whatever God would have for you to do. The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But this certain man came from Jerusalem and went down and fell among the thief that cometh to steal, kill, and destroy. Mm. The Bible begins to share with us that some things begin to happen to this man on this journey. The Bible says that when he fell among thieves that they stole his raiment. It means they took his clothes. Understand when you take your mind in other people's grass you begin to lose focus on what you have on. And understand in Romans, he said, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is my righteousness and I put on righteousness. But the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So the first thing that he does is he pulls off God's righteousness. And then he begins to strip off Jesus from you because you have to Put on, she put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what just that's the book. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ. But the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he steals Jesus off of you. That's why your mind feels so messed up like you'd never come back home because you don't feel the warm embrace of the Lord anymore because he's been pulled and stole off of you. Said, stole his raiment, stole his clothes, and wounded him. He wasn't wounded while he was in Jerusalem. But anytime you start going down from the presence of God, you make yourself available for heartbreak. You make yourself available to be wounded so bad and you blame other things and other people for all of your problems when the fact of the matter is you're wounded on the inside of some stuff that you shouldn't have been involved in in the first place and it's tough for you to get over that. You've been wounded and Jesus has been pulled off of you and so now you're naked and hurt. steal, kill, and destroy. He stole your clothes. He stole your Jesus. He stole your righteousness. He began to wound your spirit so much that you can't even see God for yourself no more. Sitting up hurt crying in the midnight hour, just wanting relief and don't even know why you hurting. Don't even know why you feel the way you feel. All you know is I need a change in my life. But I'm so wounded because my body wants to be there but my head hadn't made it yet. But here's the thing. When he got through being wounded, the people inflicting the wounds left him. 
It's funny how you will find yourselves in certain situations where everybody's around you and they make sure everybody think everything is all good and they get you doing your dirt and everybody else's dirt and then when you're left holding the bad, you look around and they leave you by yourself. And you wonder, how in the world did I get to this place? I'm hurt. I don't have Jesus in my life. I'm distracted and I don't know how to get back and I don't even know where I am. I remember being in Jerusalem and at this point, I'm somewhere between where I wanted to go and where I should have been in the first place. Here's what you have to understand. The man never made it to Jericho. Who's to say you're going to make it where you're going? Who's to say you're going to actually make it to your desired destination. He never made it to Jericho because he went down from Jerusalem and failed. How many times have we left the presence of God and have fallen? Fallen into sin. Fallen into immorality. Fallen into all kinds of things that are not like God. And then we push ourselves to say, I wish I could get back, but I'm so wounded, I don't know where to go. And sometimes you feel so injured that you feel like your spirit is dead. Because a thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But what I like about this particular text is that the Bible says that he wasn't dead. He was half dead. So if he was half dead, that means there's 50% of him that's still alive. And I need somebody to understand that there is something on your insides. I don't care how far you have come away from the presence of God, how far it's been, how long time it's been since you've been in the presence of God. There is something on the inside of you that's crying out, God, I need you. God, I got to have you. God, I can't make it without you. If I just go another day and get into your presence, I know it's been a long time, but Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. God, I got to have you. There's something that has to be that has to be rumbling on my insides because I, I realize that even though the devil left me for dead, he left me half alive because God would not let him take me out because he still has his hand on my life. Is there anybody in this place who understands that God has got you and you hadn't been left to die even though you feel dead? God still said you still half alive and all I need is a piece of breath to blow into you and the spirit of God will come back into your life. Is there anybody that would just say God blow on me? Hallelujah. The Bible begins to share with us that this man was sitting on the side of the road. You got to see it now. He, he, he came from Jerusalem going down to Jericho. And somewhere in the middle around rocks on the side of the road, there is a naked, wounded man. He was from Jerusalem, which means he had some clout because he was already in Jerusalem. But when people saw him on the side of the road, the preacher saw him. But here's what messed me up that leaped out of the text, Bishop. The Bible said the priest went down. So when the priest go down, he has no way of helping anybody else that actually needs help. God is calling for some ministers to step up their game because you can't reach out and help somebody if you're in the process of going down yourself. to share with me that the priest went down to Jericho as well. Now I got a problem with the preacher that's trying to do the same thing as the regular folk that's going to Jericho. I, I need a preacher to stand up and be real with God and stay in your place. God called you for something. How about you just stay there until God tells you to move? priest sat there and walked 
by and didn't even get, he got close enough to see what the issue was. And he went to the other side of the street to make sure he wouldn't be able to help. Some folk got out of their way. They go out of their way to make sure they don't help anybody out of the mess they're in. The devil is a lie. Somebody needs to stand up and be a help to somebody. The Bible says a Levite was at the place. <laughs> Church folk, crowd people, company people ain't quite committed to God, but they still doing their own thing. They looking at you messed up. Say, didn't you used to be in Jerusalem? But now you're here slumming it with me. Let me go on the other side because I don't want nothing part of you because I know that's hypocrite behavior and I don't like him. I'm going to be wrong, so you stay there by yourself. So I'm just going to cross the other side of the street and leave you right where you are. Oh, my God. It's amazing to me how I see this so vividly in my mind. And the man naked, wounded, and half dead just wishing that somebody would have compassion on him I need you to understand something you hadn't gone so far sometimes you feel that your mind is so far away that nobody else cares about you but just at the point where you think you're all by yourself he will send somebody in your life that nobody was expecting for the Bible tells me that a Samaritan came on by he was journeying through. That blessed me, Sister Gloria, because that let me know that he wasn't from Jerusalem and he wasn't from Jericho. He was just going through. In other words, he was a pilgrim in the land, kind of like the, 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 the table of shoe bread as it crossed through the wilderness. It didn't have a steady place, but it traveled through the land, kind of like Jesus Christ who pilgrimaged himself from 30 to 33 as he showed himself to be strong, not to be in a permanent residence, but I'm just passing through to get to glory. This Samaritan passed through and said, on my way, I'm going to pass by and touch him. It's amazing how I see Jesus in this text because every time Jesus would pass by, he had compassion in his eyes. And they called Jesus everything but a child of God, even though he was the son of God. But they called him everything else. They called Samaritans everything but their name. They called them dogs. They called them all kinds of awful words. But when they saw, when he saw the Samaritan, there was a Samaritan that had compassion on him. Oh my God, I feel like preaching now. Because here's the thing. The Samaritan gets to the side of the road and he gets off of his beast to help. And you got to understand, if you're going to help somebody, sometimes it's going to cause you to get a little dirty. Sometimes you got to pull off the facade and pull off something and humble yourself to be able to help somebody. Show somebody, yeah, they don't like me that much, but I believe I can help you right where you are. I may not have all the answers, but all I have, whatever little bit I got, I'm going to help you. This man gets off of his beast and begins to bind up the wounds. I need you to understand something. God is looking for some people that can find wounded people. Wounded souls need to come into the house of God. And they don't need to find judgmental priests. They don't need to find charismatic Levites. They need to find somebody that has an anointing on the inside of them that can help heal their broken heart, bend their broken wounds, be able to put an arm around them and tell them, I know you're hurting, but God still loves you, and I do too. I don't care how long you've been away from God. I'm welcoming you back with open arms. I don't care how bad you've been. You haven't been so bad that God can't heal you of your hurt, and he can take every wound that you have and make those things turn into scars through love. The Bible begins to share with me that now that he's bound up the wounds, he begins to pull out a couple of items. The Bible begins to share with me that he pulls out the oil. And he pulls out the wine. He pulls out the oil and he pulls out the wine. He, he pulls out the anointing and he pulls out the Holy Ghost. He pulls out the 
anointing and he pulls out the Holy Ghost and he messes it together and it begins to bring healing to the body of the man on side. He hadn't even made it to the end yet, but the oil and the wine, the anointing and the Holy Ghost matched on top of someone's wound will bring somebody back to peace and where they're supposed to be. The Bible begins to share with me now that he takes the man and picks him up and puts him on his own beast and carries him back to where he should have been in the first place. He began to take him to the end. I need somebody to understand this, this whole process that has been going on. This man has fallen from grace. He thought he would never make it. He thought he was going to die, but he was only half dead. And I'll take God's half any day because if I'm too messed up to pray for myself you best believe there's somebody or somebody somewhere praying for me and God said himself Jesus said Peter I pray for you that your faith fail not so if Jesus is praying for me that's got to be enough by itself because if Jesus prayed for me he prayed and Lazarus got up he prayed and skies were open he prayed and peace came in the midnight hour he prayed and the storm ceased so as long as Jesus is praying for me I believe everything will be okay So the Bible tells me now that the man gets put up on the beast and as he's traveling back to where he's supposed to go, there's no reason why that anybody else should look at him crazy because now he's sick and he's wounded. He's sick and he's wounded and he's traveling. He's sick and he's wounded yet he's traveling. He's sick and he's wounded yet he's traveling. I need somebody to understand. I don't care how hurt you are. I don't care how beat up you are. I will help you get to where you need to go as long as you're wounded that's all right i'll help carry you till you get to somewhere where you're supposed to be i understand you can't walk for yourself but allow me to help you to get where you need to be i know you're hurting but i can get you where you need to be i know you're tired but i'm gonna help you get where you need to be i know you think you can't make it but you don't have to walk it on your own i'm gonna put you up myself and i'll make sure you get there is there anybody in this place who's ready to get there the bible shares with me that this man once he got to the end the bible says that he told the man here is two pence i'm paying the price for him sounds like my jesus of nazareth who paid the price for me all the way on Calvary. He paid the price so I wouldn't have to do it for myself. He paid the price because I didn't have enough money because I've been stripped, I've been beat, and I'm naked. I got nothing. I got nothing, God. But he said, that's all right. I got the bill. I'll take care of it. And if you need anything else, I'm coming back. So here's what I need you to understand. Though you may be wounded, you're in the place right now where God can heal you. Though you think you've gone too far and God can't do anything with you, you're in the right place right now. I'm bringing your head back from other people's grasp so you can be in the house of God. I need somebody to understand that God can change you. Today is your day. God can make you new. Today is your day. Is there anybody in this place who's made up their mind? God, I'm not going to the left or the right. But I'm coming here and I'm staying with you. I'm going to stay with you. I'm not going to give up now, God. I'm going to turn my mind around. Even with my wounded self, I surrender my will to your will, God. If you got to pick me up, pick me up. If you got to carry me through, carry me through. I refuse to fight you, God. I'll go limp in your arms so you can take care of me. God, I'll go limp. So you can pour some oil on me. God, I'll go limp. So you can put some wine on me. God, I need your anointing. God, I need your Holy Ghost power. God, pour it on me. God, wrap me up. Bring me where I need to be. Minister to me. Heal my heart. Make me over. God, I need you. I need your power. I need your anointing. I need your presence. Heal me, Jesus. I'm coming back. I'm coming back, God. 
I'm coming back. I'm wounded, but I'm coming. I'm hurt, but I'm coming. I can't hardly see my way. They beat me up so bad that I can't even see my eyes in front of me. But God, I believe if you lead me, I ain't got to worry about myself. You'll take me where I need to go. It just so happens you're in the right place at the right time. You hadn't gone too far for God not to change it. Today is your day. Let God perform the restoration project on you. Let him restore you. Let him renew you. Let him make you over. Yes. 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 What blew my mind is that after he paid the price, he told the man, I'll be back. Let me tell you something. We, we are in this place to be healed so that one day Jesus is going to crack the sky. <laughs> and he's going to pay the ultimate reward for my soul. And I shall be caught up with him. He's coming to pay my bill. Hallelujah. Going to restore me back to him. So if you are in this place and you have been distracted, and you, you have gone down from Jerusalem. Today is your day. Today is your day. I'm waiting. God would have woken me up at four o'clock this morning, messing with my sleep if it wasn't in the house. Somebody needs to decide today, God, I'm turning back. I've gone too far. I've, I haven't done what I was supposed to have been doing. And I got myself tied up in some stuff that I, I didn't need to be in. I need you, God. Yes, yeah, in the house. I know it's in the house. Come on, come on, come on. It's in the house. Come on. Come on. Come on. The Bible says the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. In the name of Jesus. You say, preacher, this word was for me. God, I've been hurt. I've been wounded. God, I need you. 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 Hallelujah. I need you. Hallelujah. 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 I need you. Holy Ghost, I need your anointing. I need your anointing. I need your power. I need your power. In the name of Jesus. Come on, I know what's in the house. Don't fight it, don't fight it, don't fight it, don't fight it. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. God, I need you to restore me. I need you to restore my mind. Restore my spirit. Regenerate my mind, God. In the name of Jesus. Heal my broken heart. Mend my wounded soul. God, I'm tired of running. I'm tired of running. I'm tired of saying no. My body and my soul needs to say yes. In your mind right now, you're fighting it. Let go and let God change you. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself. God, I need you. God, my head is so out the fence that my body is starting to follow. And now I'm outside the fence, God, but let me back in. Restore me back to your pasture, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. 
Come on, come on, come on. You in here, you in here, come on. You in here. I'm waiting. He, God is moving at this altar. Today is your day to surrender everything to Jesus. God, I give up my will. Not my will, but yours be done. I need you in this place, God. In me, Jesus. Somebody simply just needs to say, God, I'm sorry. 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 Restore me, Jesus. Restore me, Jesus. God, I'm sorry. I left Jerusalem and went down and I fell. God, I need you to heal my broken heart. Heal my wounded soul. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Help Jesus. Help Jesus. Elder. Hallelujah. 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 Pray for her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I need you, God. I need you, Jesus. Yes, 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 yes. God wants to restore. I'm waiting. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He wants to move on you. He wants to restore you. He wants you back. He wants you back. Come on. The day you hear my voice, hard not your heart. Let it restore you. Let it make you new. Yes. 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 Let him restore you. Let him restore you. Let him make you over. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. Tell the Lord yes. Heal my heart. Heal my soul. Heal my spirit. Heal God, heal God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. God, I want to come home. God, restore my spirit. Make me over again, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh, God. Even now. Even now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Spirit of the living God. Make her over. Make her over. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus. Even right now, God. Mighty warrior for you, Jesus. Even now. Even now, God, raise him up for your glory. In Jesus' name, restoration. Restoration is here in this house. You in this place. Come on, come on, come on. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. He's here. He's here for you. He's here for you. He's here for you. Come on. He's here for you. Come on! He's here for you! He's here for you! Today is your day! Today is your day! Today is your day! No more running! I surrender all! 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 God! Yes! I'm tired of running, Jesus! I need you to heal my heart, heal my soul, heal my mind. Restore me, Jesus. God, I need yeah, 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 yeah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Spirit of the living God. I need.
Today is your day. 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 He can restore and make you new. He can make you over. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I say yes. I say yes. I say yes. I say yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Today is your day. He can restore you. And be the ruler in Yes, yes. There's still time. There's still time. I want you. Come back to Jesus. I need you. I need you, Jesus. To be the yes, Lord, ruler yes, Lord. in my life. I need you in my life. Oh, I want you. I want you. I need you. Yeah, 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 I need you. To be the ruler in, in the name my of Jesus. Life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Me. I pray for restoration. Restore that every wound of God gets wrapped up, Jesus. By your anointing oil. And by your Holy Ghost life. power. In the name of Jesus. Heal her hurt. Heal, heal her pain. Me. Restore Jesus. Restore, Restore Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. My spirit says yes. My soul says yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Surrender everything. Surrender everything. Surrender everything. Yes, 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 yes. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let go, let it go, let it go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Yeah, la 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 Flow in this house. Yes, yes, yes. I surrender. My soul said yes. I need I God is refilling people with the Holy Ghost at this altar. Yes, restoration is in this building. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, come on. You can be restored. You can be restored. You can be restored in this place. Let him heal you. Let him fill you. Let him make you over. Yes. 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 Yes from my spirit. Yes from the bottom of my soul. Yes. Yes. Surrender everything. God, I turn myself in. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. Heal my heart, God. Heal my heart, God. Heal my wound. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. God, in the I name surrender. of Jesus, 
I pray for my dear brother even now that you look upon him. I want you. I need you to be the ruler in my life. I want you. I need you to be the ruler in my life. Restoring. Let him call you home. Come on back home. Let him restore you. Let him make you over. Yes. Yes. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. God, I need you in this place. I need your mercy and your grace. Touch my spirit, touch my mind, Jesus. I need you, I need you. I need your spirit to renew and refresh me. Make me over again, Lord. I need you. I need you. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes, yes. So say, yes. Go on. Yes. He's here to restore. He's here to make brand new. He's in this house. If you're in this place and you say, Preacher, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I, I want to redo God. Today is your day. God can take 30 seconds and change your life. For the Bible says just to repent. That means tell God I'm sorry. 
and mean it from your heart. To turn away, I was going one way and I was going another. Be baptized in the name of Jesus. Well, you say, preacher, I've already been baptized. Well, it's okay, you can do it again. Bishop preached a message one time, do it again if you have to. If you need to be recommitted to God, today is your day. God can make you brand new. Is there one today? You say, preacher, I've already been baptized in the name of Jesus. And I'm ready for this to be my church home for real. This is my place. I want to shake your hand. I want to, I want to welcome you in with open arms. You say, preacher, I want this to be my church permanently. If you are here, come on. We'll welcome you right now. Today is your day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
this place and you say, I want this to be my church. I want to shake your hand and I want to pray for you. We are a family here. We'll love you and I'll be your pastor 24-7. I'm here for you. Today is your day. Let ALC be your home. Is there one today? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Bring your family. Bring your family. Hallelujah. 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 Somebody go get her family. Bring her family up here. Hallelujah. Come on, babies. Come on, babies. With your mama. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. I want you to know that I'm your pastor. 24 7, I'm here for you. No problems too big or small. I'm here. We love you. I love you. And I'm here for you. I will be your father to you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm here for you. And this whole church is here for you. We are a family. We love you.
Hallelujah. 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 Heaven is rejoicing right now. Heaven is rejoicing right now. Hallelujah. Oh, oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for the move of God. I'm thankful for his strength and his peace. Hallelujah. I told you inside of two months, God is going to turn some things around. He's already started. I'm thankful. I'm thankful. Thank God for our new additions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Those of you joining us online, we thank God for you. I appreciate how you turned out for my wife's homegoing service yesterday. You completely blew our minds with your turnout. We thank you. I thank you sincerely for your words of kindness towards me and my family. You guys have been wonderful. Thanks for every Facebook post, every tweet. Thank you for every note, every inbox, every email. Thank you. We pray for you. And I pray something was said today to bless your heart. Be with us again on Thursday night as we go further into the tabernacle. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Hallelujah. Glory to God.